So I started my business in 2010, and uh, when I started it, I had zero money. Uh, we literally started it with absolutely nothing. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, I was getting samples from a local distributor, as I was saying, the floor source. They, uh, they supplied installers, and they had uh, samples, and you'd get the samples, and uh, I would take those to customers' house. So my first job was to figure out how to generate leads, and how do I get in front of a customer. So uh, I did that with Google. I did that with Yard Signs. Uh, I did it with Facebook at the time, MySpace, and I really hammered social media and other people's energy to help me uh, generate leads so that way I can go into a customer's house and, and then sell them flooring. Uh, we, the first year we did, uh, I remember that my first goals when I first step, started my company was at that time as a salesperson working for Empire Today and at Express Flooring. I never really worked a full year because I'd work eight or nine months of the year. Then I would take two or three months off and go back to Michigan. And so at the time, I, you know, I was used to making eighty or ninety thousand dollars a year, but I never made a hundred thousand dollars in one year. So my goal was to earn one hundred thousand dollars. And since when I started my business, one third of the the my sale amount was going towards the installer, one third of it was going towards uh, myself, and uh, one third of it was going towards material. In order for me to make $100,000 in, in profit for myself, I had to sell $300,000 in sales. And I started at the end of April, I believe. And so by the time of the end of the year, I calculated if I wanted to make $100,000, I had to sell $300,000 in sales. So if I knew what my average ticket was, and I knew that I would sell two out of three the people that I went to go see, I knew that I had to be in front of three people a day in order to make 300,000 in sales between that point and the end of the year, so I would make $100,000. And miraculously, I think I started counting in December to see where I was at, and we were already at 300,000 at that point, I still had a month to go. So the, the power of writing down your goals and constantly reminding yourself is huge, it's absolutely huge. And just the law of attraction worked in my, my favor because I kept visualizing what it would be like to make $100,000 in, in, in profit for myself. So then the next year I set a goal that was completely unrealistic. I said, you know what? If I can do three hundred thousand by setting this crazy on you know lofty goal, let's go for a million. And so we did. And I made these goals. I wrote these sticker sticky notes everywhere of what I needed to do in order to generate enough leads so I can be in enough houses per day. If I was in six houses a day and I had another salesperson doing three houses a day, then we can do a million dollars in sales. And we did one point six million. Whoa, this worked. So then the following year we just doubled the goal again and I think we did three million, then we did five million. And so by the fourth year, we were doing over $5 million in sales, and I was still working in the basement of you know, this house that I bought for $35,000. So I didn't need a great big business. I didn't need a bunch of inventory. I was basically utilizing the inventory of a local supply house, being very efficient by going out there and selling a lot of these jobs myself. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, we managed to do really, really great. And so we didn't, we finally got, I needed a marketing person because I was, I was spread too thin to do all the marketing myself. I needed to hire more salespeople. So because I was, I couldn't do it all by myself with one other person. I needed to house uh, more installers. I needed a place for them to pick up product. And I wanted to figure out a way how to be more efficient financially because buying from the supplier all the time was costing me about two, maybe three dollars a yard on some products that I could be buying directly from the mill if I had a ship to point, you know, a warehouse. Um, and I was doing enough volume where it made sense for me to cut out the, the supplier, uh, the, the middleman, and go directly to the manufacturer. And so that's what we did. We, we rented, we shared space because I was trying to be efficient. I didn't know if I got caught in a three or five year lease and I didn't know if I was going to outgrow the space, you know, I would be limiting myself. Um, and so I looked for a building that had open space in it that they wanted to rent partial space with. So I found another flooring place and they had some space in their warehouse that they wanted to rent out. Um, I, did, they didn't, I don't think they wanted to rent it out originally. I went there and told them, I said, hey, what are you doing with this extra, extra space? Would you like an extra $1,500 a month uh, to put towards your rent? And I can take that space over there. So I just got creative and I started using that space. We didn't sign a long or three or five year lease. We just did kind of a month to month thing. And that's all I needed because once I outgrew that space, I was able to do the same thing in another building. And that's what I did in this building. This building's, um, I want to say close to 200,000 feet in total. And two thirds of the warehouse was just basically an indoor parking lot for their employees. So I went to the owner and I asked him, I messaged him on Facebook and says, you know, I drove by your building. I look like you have a lot of space in there. Would you like to rent some of that space to me? And so we sat down, we talked and, and I was able to work out a deal where I rented, I, I want to say five or 8,000 square feet of warehouse space and 5,000 square feet of office. 
And then every time we grew, I just asked him, can we increase that space? And obviously he wanted to rent more space because it was just dead space for him. And so it was a win-win. And so I figured that the best way to grow the business is create something that's a win-win for the person you're renting the space from and a, and a win for you. And so that's what we did. And as a result, we've now been in this building for, I think, what, five years now. And I think we're occupying a little over 60,000 square feet of space. We have a full call center. We have a full sales training room. We have uh, different departments in the, build, in the building, an order entry department, a marketing department, an executive area. I mean, we have pretty much everything. It's really, really nice. But it didn't start this way. It started literally from nothing. And, uh, you know, so, but, you know, so if you have a, a carpet store that's a brick and mortar, um, you know, you might not go to where we're at overnight, but believe me, there's a process and you can definitely get there in a very short period of time if you follow that process. You know, I ask myself, which department is probably the most important in the company? And you start thinking, well, you know, it's like the body. I mean, what's more important, the brain or the heart? I mean, the body won't work without them. So you figure those are the two most vital organs uh, of, of the business or of the body. Um, like, in, I guess you would relate to that as sales and installation. However, the body doesn't function without kidneys. The body doesn't function without lungs. Uh, the body doesn't function with a lot of very, very important organs, just like this organization can't function without, you know, order entry. The, fun the, 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 the company cannot function without a, a properly working call center uh, and sales support department. The, the company cannot function without sales, obviously, and without uh, inventory, so a warehouse. The, the business cannot function without installation. Without installs, you got nothing. And you know, without leads, without customers, you've got nothing. So every bit as important as sales and installation and managing the customers through a, a, um, through a call center or CRM system, um, very, 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 very vital is creative marketing because you need to have your message heard. You've got to make the phone ring. If the phone doesn't ring in a shop and home store or you have no customers coming in your door at a showroom, you've got no business. So it doesn't matter how good your salespeople are. It doesn't matter how many or good installers you have. If the phone doesn't ring, you got nothing. And there's really good companies out there that can help you with SEO. There's really good companies out there that can help you with pay-per-click advertisement on social media or on Google. Um, you know, there's lots of them out there. We do a lot of ours in-house, um, but you know, we've, we've used several companies. So um, let me tell you a little bit about marketing. You gotta be creative. You gotta zig when other people are zagging. I saw a speech at Surfaces a few years ago by John Goldman, and he had a, a, a book called The Secret of the Watermelon. And that little, I think it was eight to 13 pages, taught me so much that really helped me launch my brand. And so I really recommend that, that you take the time to figure out ways to creatively market. Because uh, people buy from who they like, who they connect to, not necessarily who has the best price. In fact, you'll find out that price is probably one of the least uh, important uh, aspects in the shop at home uh, arena when it comes to flooring. So anyways, uh, check this out. And as you can see over here, you know, we're really dedicated to our customers and it shows because every year they have a the Reader's Choice Awards does a vote and they, they have, they put it out to hundreds of thousands of people in the community and they nominate uh, different companies in different categories, whether it's restaurants or whether it's roofing places or whether it's a, like in our case, a flooring store. And for the last 10 years consecutive, we won first place as the most trusted place uh, in Michigan to buy carpenter flooring. So 10 years in a row, we've won first place. Uh, in this award, and it doesn't come because we have the best carpet, because we have the same carpet that everybody else has. Uh, we definitely provide the best service. Uh, we have good salespeople that are honest and they care. We don't try to uh, to hustle people and, and, and sneak one past a customer like you might see in other companies. We just we try to do really good business, and as a result of that, good things have happened to us. So not just shop at home flooring business, but any type of flooring, but actually any business in general, whether you're selling ice cream or carpet, you gotta keep your customers happy. So the most important thing I would say in most businesses uh, is the reality that sometimes customers aren't gonna be happy and you have to have a customer service department to make sure you satisfy their needs and that's what we have right over here, right? Yes. All right. So what I was talking about marketing, it's really, really, really important that you have somebody with a really creative mind. He is very strong where I'm weak and I'm very strong where he's weak. Yeah. And throughout an organization, it's really important that you know, you can't just be the, the know-it-all that knows absolutely everything in every department. Um, there's areas that I just absolutely suck at, and I'm able to recognize those things that I'm just weak at. And we can put people in place, like Tommy, who is spectacular coming up with really great creative ideas. 
uh, to help aid us in marketing because without marketing, the phone doesn't ring. So if you want some help with marketing, you can reach out to me directly. I'll be glad to help. Uh, Joe at carpetguys.com. If you'd like, you can come here and uh, visit our staff and we can uh, you know, brainstorm some ideas together and hopefully help your business. We're here with Brian. And Brian, how long have you been with us? Uh, a little over three months. Three months. Mm-hmm. And you have never done shop at home sales before. What did you do prior to this? I was a restaurant manager. All right. So you got some people experience. I do. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to come from a background of sales. You have to have a background of being a good person and to get along with people, right? Exactly. What are you making in a month? Well, this past month, I think it was a little under 20 grand. In one month? <laughs> yeah. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. What advice would you give to somebody that's going into shop at home? Real quick. It's challenging, but this far, by far the most rewarding career to, that you'll ever have. What piece of advice could you give to them? Uh, give it your all. You know, try and make your customers happy. Be nice. <laughs> Now you're one person. What's the most you've sold in one month? Two hundred fifty-nine. So you did over a quarter million dollars in sales in one month by himself, by one guy. What did you do last month? Three hundred four. Three hundred thousand in sales in one month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make any money? Yeah, I made a little money. Yeah. <laughs> nice Didn't job, make money. man. Yeah. So this guy's super organized when it comes to his shop at home inventory and his trunk. He even made. Fine, so right can you open that bottom piece, Maz, and show uh, everybody what you got back there? So he's got his hard surface samples back there, his laminate, his vinyl, his uh, hardwood, and he's got his carpet samples up top. Very nice. What what advice would you give to somebody wanting to get into shop at home as opposed to, you know, normal traditional showroom sales or? Uh, well, the biggest thing is to uh, believe in the company you're representing, and the Carpet Guys is a very easy company to believe in because. You know, I barely get any calls from customers. They, uh, uh, you know, with problems, and uh, everyone's always just blown away by the service of the installers and everything. So it's an easy company to represent. And... This is Nick. And how long have you been here, Nick? Two years. Two years. And tell me, what was your best month? My best month? Well, what was your last month? I mean, what was last month? What did you do last month? My last month? Yeah. 185. 185. What did you do the month before that? I had to take some time off. 243. Wow, quarter million. Yeah. Not bad. So this magazine's our 2020 magazine. We put this magazine out to really kind of share with our customers and kind of showcase the kind of people we are. Because people buy from who they like, who they trust. It's not always about price. In fact, very rarely is it really about price. Price is usually the objection or the excuse because they, they haven't found enough value and trust in what you're selling at, at whatever price it is you're asking for. So one way that you can really establish that common ground is just kind of share your character, be authentic. And so we, we, we put this out there. And we share this with our customers, and we, this is our 10-year anniversary. We do it every year. This is an older one right over here. And we talk about our culture, our family values, um, and, you know, just some, just some stuff about us and the things that we, the fun we have, you know, the camaraderie we have as a company and with our community. Um, here are the, some of the things that we're involved in, uh, giving uh, clothes away at Thanksgiving to the homeless. We uh, help fill an entire gymnasium with the Salvation Army for toys for kids that, that you know, our family are having a hard time around Christmas time. Um, so these are just things that, that, that are, you know, we, we like to share with, with our customers about what we do in the community. So I just want to say thank you for taking the journey with me today. Uh, it was a nice uh, few minutes to interview some of my staff members, and uh, hopefully we are able to shed some light uh, and inspire some ideas uh, because it's all about being creative and thinking outside the box. Remember to zig when everybody else is zagging. Uh, you know, we wish you the most success and uh, we, we're all in this for the same reasons. We want to do good for our families, we want to do good for our community, and we want to help other people and uh, create jobs and opportunity for more people. So as long as we have the right intentions, I think all will be right in the world. Uh, if you have anything that I can do to, uh, if there's anything you need or anything I can do to help you, please feel free to reach out. My direct email is joe at carpetguys.com. Again, joe at carpetguys.com. Remember to be wise, stay healthy, and uh, do right in your community. Every day I wake up knowing that the Carpet Guys family is built of local Michigan families. When I started the Carpet Guys 10 years ago, I wanted to create a company with real values, a company that cares, a company that will make a difference. When I drive into work, I get a great sense of pride knowing that our community is much stronger with all of us working together. We take great pride in every step we take along the way and every stitch of carpet that we lay. From our warehouse to our call center, to our design consultants and our dedicated installation team and every important person in between. When you call the Carpet Guys, you are calling your neighbor, your friend, someone who lives here just like you. We are your local family, and this is our family business. As a father, I can only hope that my son Giovanni learns the strength of what can happen when we all come together and treat everyone we serve not just as customers, but like family.
Happy 10 year anniversary to my family at the Carpet Guys. Watching you and my son grow has been the most rewarding experience of my entire life. Thank you, Michigan. My family and I are forever grateful.